Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. certain foods, plants, and animal products you can't bring back to the U.S. You can't because they're prohibited. They're prohibited because even one of these foods, plants, or animal products might carry a disease or pest that could spread to our crops and gardens and animals with devastating results. You haven't been everywhere on the globe yet, but there's always tomorrow. And before you go again, write for the free booklet that explains the law. Even one can hurt. Write for Traveler's Tips. Write to Traveler's Tips, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington, D.C., 20250. This is Vincent Price. But first on earth, as vampire sent, thy corpse shall from the tomb be rent. Then ghastly haunt thy native place and suck the blood of all thy race. That, my friends, is a verse written by the poet Lord Byron. The vampire is a truly fabulous being that rises from the grave to prey upon sleeping persons who then become vampires themselves. Driving a stake through the heart of one of the undead while he lies slumbering in his coffin during daylight hours is said to put an end to his blood-seeking wanderlust. Fate brought Carmilla and Amy together in the city of Vienna in the year 1922, not long after an armistice had ended the First World War. They appeared to be equally young, beautiful, innocent. But one was an ageless vampire, the other an unsuspecting victim. And that's just the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Carmilla, a version for listening by Brainerd Duffield of a story by Sheridan Lefanu. Our stars, Antoinette Bauer and Anne Gibbon. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where value is your byword. Sears, where America shops. Hey, look, in here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you'll need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Sears, 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 where America shops. Clinging jerseys, tight satin tops, they only look good if they hug your body smoothly. Sears Best Abra Light helps you and your clothes look good. How? Abra Light has no seam cups and straps adjust in the back so you look great up front. Whatever you do, whether it's dashing around town or simmering with disco fever in that slinky dress, it's flattering fun with the Sears Abra Light. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. It is a midwinter day in the year 1922, and we are in an upstairs bedroom of an old house on the outskirts of Vienna. Miss Amy Forrester, a young lady of quality, is writing in her journal at an antique desk by the window. She is about to tell us, in her own words, about her encounter with a vampire. I'm going to 
tell you something so strange that it will require all your faith to believe me. It concerns an incident that took place in my nursery long ago when we first lived here in Vienna. One night, I awoke and sat up. I saw a pretty face looking at me from the side of the bed. It was that of a young lady kneeling with her hands clasped in front of her on the coverlet. She drew me towards her, smiling. I felt soothed and fell asleep again. I was wakened by a sensation as if two needles ran into my throat at the same moment. I screamed. The lady backed into the shadows. I recall my father embracing me and telling me it was nothing but a dream. But I wasn't comforted, for I knew the visit of the apparition was not a dream. For some years afterward, I could not be left alone, and a nurse remained at my bedside every night. Now I'm back here in Vienna, once again. I find I am still frightened by that childhood recollection. Some people might think it trifling, but you'll see why I must mention it. Something happened one afternoon this past summer. Yes, who is it? Excuse me, Miss Amy. Your father wants to see you in his study. Thank you, Madame Peridon. I'll go at once. You wanted to see me, Papa? Yes, Amy, my dear. Come on in. Close the door. Ah, you look charming today. That's a lovely frock you're wearing. Thank you for noticing. I made it myself. Quite the proper young lady nowadays. How old are you getting to be? I'll be 18 next month, Papa. Ah, that's what I thought. Well, perhaps you're brave enough to listen to some unhappy news. Yes, Papa? I've had a letter from General Spielstorff. He can't come to us as soon as I'd hoped. Oh, I've been looking forward to meeting his daughter. I thought we could enjoy the summer sunshine together. It's just as well that you and Berta never became close friends. Why do you say that? Because the poor young lady is dead. You can't mean it. Here, let me read you this. He says, during the last days of Berta's suffering, I've been unable to talk on the phone or write to anyone. I've lost her and learned the truth too late. Thank God my child died without suspecting the cause of her misery. When I see you in the autumn, I'll tell you things I don't dare to put on paper now. Pray for me, my friend. I see what you mean. He's in great sorrow. <laughs> Poor Berta. Oh, there. Amy, you mustn't cry. I do have other news. You're going to have some companionship after all. What do you mean, Papa? We're expecting a guest. She'll be with us tonight. That should cheer you. What are you telling me? A short while ago, the phone rang. <laughs> I, I heard the voice of the Baroness Krupska calling from Salzburg. I knew her in my embassy days at the turn of the century. My, she was lively and stylish then. <laughs> a bit of a dragon now, they tell me. The Baroness is coming to visit us? Oh, no. No, I don't think either of us would like that very much. The Baroness is going to Paris on some vital business, but she's entrusting her niece to my care. What is she like, this girl? Quite beautiful. Everyone says so. Somewhat delicate, but altogether bewitching. That's a fine recommendation. The Baroness was afraid a young guest would tax my hospitality. I told her on the contrary, she'd be doing us a favor. My daughter, I said, has been expecting a house guest who cannot be with us. If you confide your niece to our care, I told her, it'll be a consolation to Amy. And what's the name of this paragon? It's a very pretty name. She's called Carmilla. My visitor arrived at dusk while I was lying down and was carried upstairs, bundled in furs, to a bedroom that had been prepared. She didn't appear at dinner time, but she was certainly the topic of our conversation. Papa had insisted from the beginning that our dignified housekeeper sit down with us at table. Amy, my dear, please pass the cream. Certainly. How do you like our guest, Madame Peridon? Very much. Almost as pretty as you, my dear. About your age and exquisite manners. The rumors were correct. She's absolutely lovely. Ah, such a sweet voice. Though we only exchanged a word or two, she sank into a deep sleep as soon as her head touched the pillow. A fainting spell from the excitement, no doubt. I hope I haven't done a foolish thing in taking charge of the young lady. I had Dr. Kleinbach take a look at her to protect you from contagion. And what was his diagnosis? Favorable. Yeah, she's tired and a trifle nervous, but completely sane. And not subject to fits. <laughs> Very amusing, Papa. 
When am I to be allowed to meet her? Uh, forgive me, my child, but you know I always like to take precautions. Uh, she's sitting up now with a supper tray. There can be no harm in seeing her. <laughs> What's the best way to save on new clothes? Sew them. Start by saving $40 on a Kenmore sewing machine at Sears. With a convertible free arm for narrow sleeves, cuffs, and legs, a built-in button holder, even six stretch stitches. This free arm Kenmore, just $199.95, and save $30 on a wood veneer sewing cabinet. Sale ends March 31st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Spring is a playground of texture at Sears Junior Bazaar. Our classic blazer is touchable in cotton and polyester terry. Push the collar and the sleeves up, wrap it close, or let it breeze open. Slip a saucy pointel top underneath and you've got contrast. Or let each go solo in the sunshine. Finish with crisp coolness in polyester and cotton, poplin wrap skirts, and pleated pants. All mix and matchable in neutral and earthy tones from Junior Bazaar at most larger Sears retail stores. Generations ago, families dined by the warmth of the open hearth. Today, Sears rekindles this spirit with its open hearth dining room furniture. Faithfully rendered early American designs and careful workmanship give it an heirloom quality. The satin glow and warm highlighting of Sears open hearth take 26 steps to achieve. There's no shorter method to bring out the beauty of the wood. And like all good furniture, open hearth is made to last for a long time with sturdy tongue and groove and mortise and tenon construction. Choose from 16 different pieces of open hearth at most Sears retail stores. Shortly thereafter, I entered the Sanctum Sanctorum. Carmilla rested against pillows on the canopied bed. As I approached and opened my mouth to speak, I was suddenly struck dumb. I saw the very face which had visited me that terrible night in my childhood. It was a pretty face, but with a melancholy expression. This changed into a smile of recognition. I couldn't say a word. It was she who spoke first. How wonderful. Twelve years ago, I saw your face in a dream, and it has haunted me ever since. Wonderful indeed. Twelve years ago, whether in a dream or in reality, I certainly saw you. I couldn't forget your face. This is not to be believed. She took my hand and pressed it. Whatever had frightened me was gone. I felt reassured and blushed as I stammered words of welcome. Sit here beside me. I must tell you my vision about you. It's so strange that we had a vivid dream of each other, you and I, that we have seen one another before, looking as we do now, when, of course, we were both children. My father has books on, on psychic experience, perceptions, intuitions, whatever you want to call them, but I never believed a word of it until now. Let me tell you. I was perhaps six years old. I woke from a troubled dream to find myself in a different room in another house. I knelt beside a bed as if to pray. Then I saw you. It was most assuredly you, as I see you now, with golden hair and angelic blue eyes. Ah, it was your looks that won me over. I wanted you to be my friend. I recall embracing you as if we had always known each other. And then... I think we both fell asleep. Is that what you remember? I was roused by a scream. You were sitting up screaming. That frightened me and I ran away. Somehow I lost consciousness. And when I came to, I was in my own bed again, at home. I only know that I was greatly terrified. In all this time, I have never forgotten your lovely face. It isn't a mere resemblance. You are the young girl whom I saw then. I don't know which of us should be the most afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if you were less pretty, I should be very much afraid of you. But being as you are, and young as we both were, I only feel that I made your acquaintance years ago. It does seem as if we were predestined to be friends. I've never had a close friend, and I've longed to find one. Dear Amy, have I found one now? I'd like to be companionable. I'll try. I want to make a compact of true friendship. A 
But forgive me, I... You're exhausted, I can see that. Yes, suddenly I feel quite tired. It's my fault, Carmilla. I'll bid you good night. Oh, please don't go. The doctor thinks you ought to have a maid to sit up with you. One of ours is waiting in the hall. You'll find her most useful and quiet. No, I never could sleep with an attendant in the room. Uh, our house was robbed once. And a servant was murdered, so I always lock my door. It's become a habit. I know you won't mind. I see there's a key in the lock here. Suit yourself. Lock yourself in if you like. You'll be quite safe. Good night, then, my new friend. Or should I say my old friend? It's hard to part with you. But we'll see each other again tomorrow. Though not too early. I like to lie abed most of the day. I'm what they call a night person. You'll soon get used to that. Good night. She had walked with me to the door and embraced me fondly, determined that we should be great friends. Young people like and even fall in love with one another on impulse. I was flattered by the affection she showed and had every reason to be delighted with my new companion. Yet, I felt a faint antipathy along with my admiration of her. I woke in the night and saw a vision of Carmilla standing at the foot of my bed and smiling. I had a sudden premonition, a foreboding of my own death. There was a park between our villa and the river, and one day, a month after Carmilla's arrival, we stepped outside for a stroll and met Madame Peridon on her way back from doing errands. If I were you girls, I shouldn't go into the park, or anywhere there'll be crowds of people. Why do you say that, madame? You see what's going on over there at the church? Another funeral. The third one since last Sunday. There's some sort of fever going around that infects young girls, like yourselves. Why has no one told us? Your father never speaks of anything that might frighten you. He's gone to the churchyard. I, I thought you knew she was going to be buried. Is it someone we know? The daughter of the shoemaker at the corner. Not little Lenny. Poor child fancied she saw a ghost five days ago and has been dying slowly ever since. Tell me nothing about ghosts. I shan't sleep tonight if you do. I'm going into my kitchen. There'll be fewer germs there than outside in the open air. You're probably wise. We'll see you at dinner. Au revoir, madame. I hate funerals. What does that signify to you, my dear? It makes me wonder about the home and family you never mention. It indicates a people with strange manners and customs of which we in Vienna know nothing. I gather your native country is more remote than I imagined. That isn't true. It's very close by. Soon I intend to tell you all about it. That funeral bell... It fills my heart with fear whenever I hear it. Don't talk that way. The tragedy of life is not that men die, but that they cease to live. What does that mean? Oh, I'll explain it to you when the time comes. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Is there a Mrs. Samuels at home? Uh, this is she. Uh, Mrs. Samuels, this is Peters. Uh, I work with security at the Mutual Liberty Building. Where my husband works? What is this? Uh, Mrs. Samuels, uh, your husband has collapsed here in the lobby. Oh, no. Uh, he was gripping at his chest, you know, uh, some kind of seizure. We've got an ambulance on the way. What hospital is he being taken to? I'll be right Mr. There. Samuels was having a heart attack, as will a million other people this year. More than 600,000 of them will die. The American Heart Association wants everyone to learn cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, so that heart attack victims will have a better chance. CPR can sustain the life of a heart attack victim until emergency medical care arrives. CPR was pioneered and developed by the American Heart Association. Support your local heart association. We're fighting for your life. 
If trivia turns you on, turn on William B. Williams and Bill St. James every weekday when they may give you a chance to win WNEW cash for the answers to trivia questions from any one of four categories, and you pick the category. To be eligible to play, send your name, address, phone number, including your business number if you work between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., and your favorite category, pop luck, sports, entertainment, or recent world history, to WNEW right away. Now, if William B. or Bill call you, you'll win $10 for a trivia quickie answer or $100 for a Jim Lowe trivia toughie. The question may be trivial, but the cash is not. And by the way, whether you answer your question correctly or not, you're eligible just for playing to win an AM-FM stereo system in a weekly drawing. Better get those cards in right away to Trivia, WNEW, 565 Fifth Avenue, New York, 10017. I wonder what the longest-running play on Broadway was, after all. And Break the Bank, wasn't that Burt Parks? And who was the last hitter to hit 400? Snow is falling on the Viennese countryside out beyond the window where Amy Forrester continues to write in her journal. The icicles on the roof outside seem an appropriate background for Amy's story of her encounter with a vampire. Later, Carmilla grew cheerful, and we talked a great deal. The evening went by without further sign of her weakness, as she called it. I didn't want her to pick up the fever they said was all around us. I was so healthy, I couldn't allow anything to happen to my guest. The following evening after dinner, my father called us to his study. Come right in, young ladies. I have something to show you. Here, look at these. What are they, father? Old pictures, portraits mostly. I recently sent them to be cleaned. Aren't they splendid? Do you see them, Carmilla? Yes, I can see them very well. My late wife was of an old Hungarian family. Most of these have come to us through her. Don't you like them? Images of dead people. I neither like nor dislike them. But they're undoubtedly old, and some of them are quite curious. I'm seeing most of these myself for the first time. Smoke and dust had almost obliterated them till now. One in particular should interest you. Let's see. Ah, yeah, here it is. I remember that when I always loved her. But she was so black and with age I could hardly make out the face. It's a small picture, but interesting. What is her history? Not only a small picture, it's a small miracle. Why, it's the very image of you, Carmilla. It's certainly a wonderful likeness. I thought you'd notice that. It's really startling. It seems to live. Here you are on canvas, living, smiling, ready to speak. Isn't it perfection? See, she even has a little mole like yours on her throat. I don't have a mole. It's a beauty spot. May I hang this picture in my room? May I, Father? Of course you may. Now the lettering's restored, we can read the name quite plainly. Marcia Kernstein. And the date, 1698. Yes, but it's not Marcia. The name is Mirkala, Countess of Karnstein. Oh, and there's a tiny coronet above it. I'm descended from the Karnsteins. I, I ought to say my mother was. Ah, so am I, you know. A long descent, very ancient. Are there any Karnsteins living now? Uh, the family was wiped out, I believe, in some civil wars. But the ruins of the castle aren't far from here, in a private park, about three miles away. Yes, I've been there. It's situated among other more recent ruins of the Great War. But it's right in the middle of the city, with honking traffic all around. I don't care much for ruins, but we must go there sometime. We'll get up an expedition and take a picnic before the weather turns too cold. Come to the window, Amy. See the moonlight? We can look at pictures tomorrow. Why don't we take a walk and look down on the river? <laughs> like the night you came to stay with us. A month ago, there was a bright moon like this one. So you're thinking of the night I got here. Are you glad I came? I shall always be glad. And you asked for the picture you think resembles me to hang in your room? I declare, you're getting sentimental, Carmilla. When you get around to telling me your story, it'll be one romance after another. Don't be silly. I'm sure you've been in love. There's probably an affair of the heart going on right now. I've never cared deeply for anyone. And never shall, unless it be someone like you. You'll have me in tears in a minute. It's the fever. 
Papa would grieve if he thought you were running a fever and didn't let us know. How cold it's getting to be. Oh, that wind off the Danube. Yes, let's go back to the house at once. Soon we were by the fire. Carmilla seemed more melancholy than ever before. Tell me, my dear, have you heard from your aunt while you've been with us? No. Do you know where a letter would reach her right now? I can't really say. But I do think I've overstayed my welcome. You've already been too hospitable. I shall go away tomorrow and look for my aunt. I know where I will find her eventually. Carmilla, you're talking nonsense. Oh, no, you mustn't dream of doing any such thing. I won't consent to your leaving us. The Baroness said you should stay with us till she returned. Do you hear that, Carmilla? We won't allow you to leave us. I'm not used to taking orders from anyone. Oh, no one is giving orders, my dear girl. But tonight, the reports of the mysterious disease in the district are more alarming than ever. I feel responsible for your safety. You mustn't think of leaving us. I must thank you again, sir. I have seldom been so happy in my life as under your care and in the company of your daughter. I went up with Carmilla to her room, as I did every evening, while she was preparing to go to bed. I apologize for my behavior tonight. There are things I want to tell you, but I don't know how to begin. Do you think you'll ever confide in me? You won't answer. I ought not to have asked you that. You were quite right to ask me. I wish I could answer, but you don't realize I'm under vows. The time is coming soon when I shall tell you everything. When I do tell you, you'll think of me as cruel and very selfish. Selfish? My kind of friendship is always selfish. You and I, we need a blood oath to seal our friendship. <laughs> You're delirious again. How you do run on. If you're going to talk that way, I won't listen. I shall leave the room. Good night, Carmilla. For the blood is the life. Remember that. Blood is the life. <laughs> I had adopted Carmilla's precaution of locking my bedroom door, having taken into my head her fear of midnight invaders. But dreams have a way of coming through walls to light up dark rooms. I had a dream that night, which was the beginning of an agony of dreams. I saw, or imagined I saw, something moving around the foot of my bed. It was a sooty black animal that seemed like a, a monstrous cat, before my eyes, it transformed itself into Carmilla, standing there, staring with blood on her nightgown. I heard a voice. Your mother warns you to beware of the assassin. I was terrified. I ran to the door and found it locked as usual from the inside. My next recollection is of being in the hallway, crying for help and pounding on Carmilla's door. Miss Amy, what's the matter? What has happened? There's an evil spirit in this place. We must waken Carmilla. Oh, calm yourself, Miss Amy, I beg you. Go downstairs, madame. Bring some men to force this locker or break the door down. Yes, Miss Amy, I will. The door swung open. We gazed into the room. Carmilla! Carmilla! Camilla, where are you? He called her by name, but there was no reply. We looked round the room. Everything was undisturbed. It was exactly in the state I left it when bidding her good night. But Carmilla was gone. We thought Carmilla might have hidden herself somewhere nearby. But the door had been locked and the windows all secured. Daylight brought no solution. The entire household was in a state of agitation. As evening came on, I went upstairs again, and there was Camilla standing at her dressing table. She beckoned to me, and I ran to embrace her. Amy, oh, my own darling Amy. We've been frightened half to death. Where have you been? When did you come back? This last night has been a night of wonders. I want a sensible explanation. It was past two last night before I went to sleep, with the doors and windows locked. 
All I can say is that my sleep was uninterrupted and dreamless. But I woke just now on the sofa in the little dressing room. The door between the rooms was open. The other door was forced open. How could that have happened without my being wakened? By this time, hearing voices, my father entered the room. He was incredulous to be told the same story I had heard. He took Carmilla's hand. Will you forgive me, my dear, if I ask you a question? Ask what you please. I'll do my best to answer, but my story is simply one of bewilderment. Precisely. Now, the marvel of last night consists in your having been removed from your bed in your room without being wakened. What possible explanation can there be? Have you ever been suspected of walking in your sleep? Never. Not since I was very young. Ah, uh, but you did walk in your sleep when you were young. Yes, I was told so by my nurse. Oh, uh -huh. well, and what happened is this. You got up in your sleep and unlocked the door. You took the key with you, locking the door from the outside. Do you follow what I mean? But how, Papa, do you account for her finding herself in the dressing room, which we had searched so carefully? She came back there after you had searched it, still in her sleep, and awoke spontaneously, as much surprised to find herself where she was as anyone else. <laughs> I wish all mysteries were as easily explained. The explanation involves no drugging, tampering with locks, no burglars, poisoners, witches, nothing that need alarm anyone about our safety. And that's the end of it. Father arranged that a servant should sleep outside Carmilla's door in case she walked in her sleep again. But if her sleep was dreamless, mine was not. Strange sensations troubled my sleep. There was a cold, peculiar thrill, as if one were swimming against the current of a river. Sometimes there came a sensation as if warm lips kissed me, longer and more lovingly as they reached my throat. And there, the caress fixed itself. My breath came faster and faster with a sense of strangulation till I became unconscious. It told on my appearance this siege of nightmares. But I assured my father I was quite well. In a way, this was true. I felt no pain. Some kind of narcotic was acting on me, and my perceptions were benumbed. Hurry, hurry, step right up to most Sears retail stores for the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Take aim for special savings on these items. Save $40 on a fully automatic garage door opener. Save $10 to $15 on several handy and versatile bathroom storage cabinets. Get $40 off a 14-inch lightweight chainsaw with its own carrying case. Take home big savings, real straight shooting at the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Hurry, hurry. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Your baby's room. Furnish it with the quaintness and charm of Sears Jenny Lynn's crib, dresser, and chest. Your baby will be secure in our old-fashioned crib built with high sides and a safety drop-side latch. And each handsome maple color piece comes in a non-toxic finish. Sears Jenny Lynn dresser and chest is furniture that will adapt gracefully as baby grows older, too. So visit us soon, because Sears has baby buys bundled up. Available at most Sears retail stores. Understand you type fast. Yes. Accurate? Well... That's okay. You'll be typing on Sears' exclusive corrector electric typewriter with easy correction and more. It's Sears' best. Try typing Sears' corrector typewriter. Whoops. Now, first, Sears is S-E-A-R-S, not Z. So, backspace to the incorrect letter. Tap the correction key. Now the mistake is blocked out. Next, type the correct letter. Then proceed. Yes, Daddy. Vincent Price again, and here's the concluding act of Carmilla. Early one morning, I found Dr. Kleinbach waiting downstairs. Father had sent for him without telling me. Since the doctor was there, I told him my story. My father came and stood beside me. Well, doctor, I dare say you'll tell me I'm an old fool for having brought you here. Not a bit of it. Amy, you mentioned a sensation. Needles piercing the skin of your throat the night of that first dream. Did you feel any soreness? None at all. Indicate with your finger the point where this occurred. A, a little below my throat. Here. Remove your scarf, please, and open your collar. We need to look for symptoms. There's nothing there, is there? Indeed there is, my dear girl. A small blue spot. God bless me, so there is. 
A spot about the size of the tip of your little finger. The question is, what's best to be done? Am I in any danger? I trust not, my dear. I don't see why you shouldn't begin to get better immediately. Now, that's the same point at which the feeling of strangulation began? Yes. And also the center of that thrill, like the current of an icy stream running against you. It may be. Yes, I think it is. May I say a word to madame? Yes, certainly. Madame Paradon, will you come over here, please? Yes, doctor. Is there something I can do? I find this young lady far from well. Steps must be taken. Madame, be so good as to not let Miss Amy be alone for one moment. That is the only order I need give for the present. But it's an important one. We may rely on your discretion, madame, I know. Indeed, you may, sir. Thank you. I shall be back about seven this evening. Later that morning, when Papa came from his study, he had an envelope in his hand. Amy, this letter has been delayed in the mail. It's from General Spielsdorf. He'll be with us soon. He may be here today. You don't look pleased, as you should when a friend is coming. You look as if you wished him at the bottom of the Red Sea. Oh, it's just that his plans are so erratic. Dear Papa, will you confide in me? That all depends. Does the doctor think me very ill? He thinks you'll be well again, Amy. At least on the road to recovery in a day or two. Meanwhile, don't trouble your head about it. Carmilla had been upstairs, sleeping late as always. When next I saw her, it was mid-afternoon, and she was coming from the kitchen with a picnic basket on her arm. Get ready, Amy. We're going to make our expedition. Where are we going? To the ruins of Karnstein. We're not putting off seeing them any longer. How will we get there? By taxi, of course. Come along. Don't keep me waiting. But I shouldn't. An old friend of my father's, General Spielsdorf, may be arriving this afternoon. The general will have to wait. See him when we get back. Come now. Put on your coat this instant. Amy, where are you going? You can't go out right now. It's a sort of picnic. Carmilla has decided. Does your father know? He said you mustn't be alone. But madame, I shan't be alone. Carmilla will be with me. No autumn drive could have been prettier. A steep Gothic bridge led to the deserted chapel among a grove of cypress trees. We had dismissed the taxi cab to enjoy our stroll. Isn't it peaceful, Amy, dear? Look at those colors. A woodland in the midst of a busy city. One could linger for an eternity. We shan't do that. Let's find a grassy spot to spread the blanket and have our sandwiches. I love the crunch of leaves underfoot, don't you? Autumn is my favorite season. We can sit down here. Give me the basket. My goodness, the sun's going down. We must think of getting home before dark. You're not going home, Amy. Neither of us will go. This will be our home from now on. Mother was standing behind me. Her slender hand closed like a vice of steel around my wrist. A kerchief soaked with some acrid chemical was pressed over my nose and mouth. I awoke in a dim, dark chamber, surrounded by dampness and stone. It was so cold, so frightening. I couldn't see her, but I knew she was there on the marble floor beside me. A shaft of moonlight showed her once lovely face, twisted in a diabolical grin. Amy, my dear child. Where have you taken me? What is this place? It is a place of refuge. I come here every day for the sleep I need to sustain my existence. This is a nightmare. Another nightmare. I don't understand what's happening to me. It's the renewed slumber as much as the living blood that supplies us with our vigor. What must I do? You will do as I do. You no longer have any choice. Am I dead then? Am I dead? Not yet. But before the night is over, I will drain you to the brink. You shan't suffer. I have learned to be gentle. You needn't be afraid. No, you can't do this. I don't want to die. Are you afraid of dying? Why? You must die. Everyone on earth must die. And all are happier when they do. Where have you brought me? 
What is this place? It is the tomb of the Karnsteins, my dear friend. Who are you? I am Mirkala, Countess of Karnstein. But Mirkala is dead. She died three centuries ago. I am undead. And you will soon be one of us. I thought you were my friend. I shall be. Always. You're the companion I've been seeking. I will teach you the things you must know. You've seen your last sunrise. Your human life will soon be over. But I will keep you alive forever as a vampire. You mean tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow you will begin. Tomorrow night, you make your first kill. I will show you how. No, I can't bear to think. I cannot. I've made the decision for you. You had to come with me. Now you know what I couldn't tell you before. Have pity on me, please. Too late for pity. Now we must be quiet. We must rest while we can. Go to sleep, my precious child. The rest of the story was related to me later. When General Spielsdorf arrived, he brought a priest to exorcise evil spirits and a learned man who knew the tradition of vampirism. The general had come to Vienna with the intention of exploring the graves of the Karnstein family. Using ancient maps, they found the tomb and ripped away the ivy, which concealed the marble tablet. With crowbars, they broke in the door. Good work. Now flash your light down there. Come on, then. Look, I didn't anticipate this. Look there, my friend. They are here. Both of them are here. But Amy looks so pale. Is she... Stand aside. Let me test her pulse. Is she alive? Yes, she's alive. Though the heart action and the respiration are barely perceptible. Then we've come in time. We'll save her, never fear. And the other one there, gentlemen, is the Countess Mirkala. I knew her by another name. Camilla and Mirkala, the same creature, with the letters of the name rearranged. Your daughter and mine were victims of the same demon. At least this child can be saved, though Berta was not. The commissioner will be here shortly. We can't wait for him. Hand me the stake. Thank you, Doctor. I'll wield the hammer. Oh, Camilla, Mirkala, whatever your name may be, how I have longed for this moment! <laughs> taken me a long time to recover but to this day the image of Carmilla returns to memory sometimes the playful languid girl sometimes the writhing fiend I saw in the tomb under the ruined chapel often from a daytime reverie I have been startled into sudden fear thinking I have heard the light step of Carmilla at the door to my room in the light of day it is not particularly alarming at night, in the dark, it is sometimes enough to make my heart stop. I am assured that Carmilla is dead, yet she will never be gone from my memory. Not now, not ever. Words out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. Thumbs up. 
Stop for the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Stop. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Hurry, hurry, step right up to most Sears retail stores for the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Save $3 a gallon on Easy Living Flat Semi-Gloss and Ceiling Paint. Now only $9.99 a gallon. Save $100 on a 10-inch radial arm saw with leg set. Just $279.95. Save $30 or $40 on two crystal glass chandeliers. Now $59.99 and $79.99. Take home big savings. It's Sears National Hardware Week sale. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. The natural look really helps do something for a woman. The classic look does too. Now there's a group of classic coordinates at Sears that really does up the natural look for spring. Everything in a nubby, texture-rich blend of polyester, rayon, and flax in two of this season's favorite colors, mauve or natural. Capture the double-breasted blazer, wrap skirt, straight-leg trouser pants, and open basket weave shirts. Sears Spring Coordinate Group in sizes 8 to 16 will really help do something for you at most larger Sears retail stores. Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops. Carmilla was written by Brainerd Duffield, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Antoinette Bauer and Anne Gibbon. Also heard were Olin Soule, Anne Seymour, George Sperdakos, and Don Diamond. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.